More than 100 days into its war against Hamas, Israel is facing mounting pressure from the international community to agree to a plan for post-war Gaza. While Israeli authorities have repeatedly said, Israel has no intention of permanently occupying Gaza or displacing its civilian population. Between Israel, key ally the United States, and Arab states like Egypt and Saudi Arabia, agreeing on a proposal is difficult. The argument now is over who would lead the reintroduction of some form of government in, in the Gaza Strip. Nobody can agree on what it should be. Here's why reaching a consensus is so complicated. After the October 7th attack, Israel declared war on Hamas and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu swore to eradicate the militant group. But that's not a straightforward goal. Hamas, formed in 1987, is a U.S.-designated terrorist organization that rejects Israel's right to exist. It's also governed Gaza since 2007. Israel has had no trouble establishing, in a sense, military dominance in the Gaza Strip. But the problem is that Hamas has been able to prepare for an Israeli invasion, most famously through an incredibly extensive network of tunnels. As the Israeli military pushes south, working both above ground and below to wipe out Hamas, pockets of resistance remain, even in areas under Israel's control. The Israelis claim that they are inflicting heavy casualties on Hamas's military wing. However, the Israelis also admit that they are not eliminating Hamas. The survivors of Hamas are trying to re-establish their political and civil control of the areas that the Israeli army is vacating, so that the war, from the Israeli point of view, is turning into a kind of whack-a-mole. Even without the military setbacks, Israel will have a hard time getting some of the key outcomes it wants in place at the end of this conflict. To start, Israel wants to be in charge of security in the enclave. I think Israel will, for a, an indefinite period, will have the overall uh, security responsibility because we've seen what happens when we don't have it. Israel also wants Gulf countries to play a leading role in rebuilding Gaza, an idea those countries are unlikely to agree to without a clear plan for a Palestinian state. In 1994, an elected body called the Palestinian Authority, or PA, was formed as part of a peace agreement known as the Oslo Accord. It was supposed to gradually assume governance of the West Bank and Gaza. That transfer of power was never fully realized, but the PA did secure some control in the Palestinian territories. In 2005, Israel withdrew its soldiers from Gaza. Hamas's victory in the 2006 elections earned the militant group a strong legislative majority in the Palestinian Authority. But a global boycott and a 2007 civil war left Hamas in charge only of the Gaza Strip, while the PA, now controlled by the more moderate Fatah group, maintained its position in the West Bank. Fast forward to today, the US, Egypt, and Qatar are pushing Israel and Hamas to agree to de-escalate in phases. And while both sides appear open to conversation, any resolution involving Hamas is a non-starter for Israel. In place of a Hamas government, the U.S. and Arab allies are calling for the Palestinian Authority to return to Gaza. But the PA is widely seen as corrupt, so they'd want to make some changes first. A stronger, reformed Palestinian Authority that can more effectively deliver for its own people has to be part of the equation. It's really an expression of the lack of trust in the Palestinian Authority and its leader, Abbas, at the moment. It would mean bringing in new blood, but nobody really knows uh, who that would be. The U.S. also wants negotiations to include a path to establishing an independent Palestinian state, known as the two-state solution. It really is the only path that provides peace and security for all. And what is more, it is not impractical. It can be done. But Netanyahu argues that it would pose an existential danger to Israel. The idea of there being a single Palestinian address essentially puts pressure on Israel to deal with Palestinians as a national movement rather than as a collection of towns and villages in the West Bank and Gaza. The Palestinian Authority has its own hesitations about re-entering Gaza, especially without the guarantee of statehood. They're not going to just go back in, as they say, on the 
uh, backs of Israeli tanks. It would be a death knell for the Palestinian Authority in terms of its domestic constituency if it was seen as coordinating with the Israeli occupation. And after decades of talk of a two-state solution, Palestinian officials say they want action. We want Washington to walk the walk, meaning that we need specific measures to implement the two-state solution, not only believe in two states. Israel, Hamas, and Arab countries are offering proposals for ceasefire or peace deals. But so far, there's little movement. The current situation is incredibly difficult to resolve because it's really a collision of three things. One is a terrible humanitarian situation. Secondly, uh, a military problem from the Israelis' point of view, which is that it is proving extremely difficult to eliminate Hamas as a fighting force. And then you have the political level at which there is a complete impasse because the Israeli government is unwilling to agree to the two conditions that outside players want, which is the Palestinian Authority has to be involved in replacing Hamas as the power in Gaza. And secondly, there has to finally be movement towards Palestinian sovereignty. So untangling this knot is proving extremely difficult and nobody really knows how this will end.